Welcome to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast where Hot Springs Village, Arkansas is the star. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we discuss the history, facts, people, places, events, lots more surrounding Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com. Hello and welcome back to another episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what, people? If you don't tune in for anything else, you at least get a good laugh now and then. We're, we're, we're chuckleable. Right, we, we need to we need to start a private club. We yeah. might have to require that you make a small donation, a small <laughs> cash donation, but we need to do a club of like pre-show and post-show and just make that available to really super special subscribers that that yeah. might be. Yeah. The VIP subscribers. Yeah, it Randy. would probably, you VIP know, subscribers. platinum content. I think they could <laughs> you know, make, it, make it available. Could we start with like tin or bronze and work our way up to a platinum <laughs> yeah. content? Yeah. We may have yeah. to work our way it used up. to be copper, but copper's worth a lot now. Yeah, now copper's valuable. Who knew? Well, yeah, tell you what. Exactly. Today, another episode of, of Dennis and Randy chatting and, um, just got back a couple of weeks ago from the West coast. I had never in my entire life been to California. And that's unbelievable to me. And, and had really not been a real fan to be frank about it. And I'll summarize I want to make sure that sometimes we go a little long and we don't get to the detail. Uh -huh. I'll summarize by saying <laughs> the night after we got back, which I was very sick, by the way, uh, I did have, I don't know that I would call them nightmares, but I did have dreams of brown concrete walls along the interstate and dry, dusty fields. And just, uh, you know, I, I told Randy earlier, I said, uh, living in California, at least at this time, would greatly improve my prayer life because four or five times a day, I'd pray for rain. And the other four or five times, I'd pray I didn't get killed in traffic. Yeah. But <clears throat> there's that. There's that. Yeah. So they got weather going on. We got to give it, we got to tip, tip our hat to their weather. Usually, I don't mean their air quality. No, well, I, but here, here's the deal. We flew in, and and I, I promised one of our our listeners, a couple of our listeners, actually, that we would talk about this. Uh, what's it like traveling in the age of a pandemic? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. You know, so we in our back this trip Arkansas, had been planned back how oh, far? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we we planned this out pre-pandemic. Oh no, 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 no! Just three or four months ago. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, we had planned pre-pandemic, we were planned to go to Spain and then, uh, they had the Castellone riots and then we had a pandemic and then we, so if you need a place just tore up good, tell us where to go and we'll buy tickets <laughs> and, and we'll mess it up for you. You know, uh, Diane and I have planned four or five months ago. We were like, well, let's go to, uh, up through the Sequoias and blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, the Sequoias are on fire and, uh, they're putting blankets around them and, uh, Okay, well, look, Diane said, well, let's just let's scrub that. And let's just rub along, drive along the coast and, you know, see the beauty. And, and then, you know, up in Santa Barbara and, okay, the highway's closed because of all the smoke and, and uh, cinders. And, uh, yeah, it, yeah. And, and it's irony. The, the irony is, is that you listen to all these reports. And then when you get there, it, for us, it literally just works out just at the last second. So. We leave Little Rock. Uh, we drive to Memphis because there's a heck of an airfare back and forth uh, to L.A. from Memphis. Allegiant Air, one of the really cheaper airlines. I think it was four forty a person with a three day car rental, or what was a week with car rental. So it was like four forty a person plus a car rental included. It was fantastic. Now you you felt like you were riding on cardboard, but when we got on the bus, uh, right. you know, when we got into the the uh, uh, airport it was mask time now had i not known and had i not thought it through uh, that was what my next two weeks were going to look like would be a mask time because uh, you know you're in an airport which is a national facility and then you get on the airline which you know i understand this you know but getting on the plane i thought well this could be crowded and this could be whatever it was a e319 airbus e319 i think it suited seated 160 people and there may have been 50 people on the plane may oh, okay uh made for a really nice trip and you know <clears throat> it's all safe and fine and everybody's got a mask right up until they say the cart tray comes by and you can eat your cheez its with your mask down so you know there's that so apparently cheez its keep you from spreading the covid yeah, I, who knew who knew yeah, no comment um we get off in la 
meet some of the nicest people. I am not exaggerating. I mean, if I'll tell you what it is, if, if it wasn't, uh, uh, some of the people that helped us find the gate, some of the people that were, uh, uh on the, the plane, plane back and forth, uh, I mean, on the shuttle back and forth, uh, just really nice folks. You just kind of had that I'm lost look on your face. Yeah. Well, I have that look all the time, but it, it looked, uh, it was, <laughs> I have the I'm lost look, but I'm in a new right. location. Look, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, uh, 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 so anyway, Memphis to LA and this yep. flight took how long? Uh, four hours, something like that. Yeah, and Diane was like, Oh, we're, we're leaving at eight and we'll get there at 10. I said, no, it'll be 10 their time. It'll be midnight our time. And it will yeah. be tired. And we were, uh, stayed at the holiday Inn express the area around the airports kind of eh, up and down, oh, yeah. but the, uh, man with what they're doing at LAX is unbelievable. Probably. Uh, an area within two to three miles of LAX has basically been incorporated. They're building parking decks that are five stories tall. They're going to have a monorail that goes between all these different terminals. Uh, we flew in to the new terminal, uh, which was this unbelievable. We'll have to put some pictures. Unbelievable. Terminal. Yeah. It actually looked like a, um, it had a glass face and it looked like a sailboat roof mm -hmm. with this huge glass face on it. And Oh, unbelievable building. But then you have to be put on a shuttle and ridden across the tarmac and endangering life and limb to get to the other one. So anyway, the, the, it's really going to be something because when they're done, the monorail will drop you off at the car centers, you know, the car rental centers, and then over at the, the parking decks and man, it's, it's going to be something, but I think it's scheduled to complete 2024. So it's so the hassle done. then you get there and the hassle to get the car is. You know what? I got to tell a story about Hector first, because uh, Hector, I kept saying, well, is Hector coming from the, to pick us up? And <laughs> this, this is a, the story. And uh, Hector, they're like, well, Hector's out front. He's waiting on you. I said, it's the holiday in granite, big, big green van. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And me, I'm a goob, you know, I get my bags and I start dragging them on and he goes, no, so near, they go in the back, they go in the back. I'm like, okay, I'm an idiot, you know? And uh, he loads them up <laughs> He goes out front. I'll have to back up from the microphone. And he goes, you hoo you hoo Holiday Inn Express, you hoo <laughs> So, so he, you know, he's a, he's a really fun guy. You know, he gets back on the bus, and I'm like, you hoo this is our exit, you know? And Diane's like, quit mocking the guy. You know, I'm like, no, he's, yeah. a, he's a good sport, you know? Yeah. And I said, you know, hey, Hector, in the morning, I said, do y'all do room service? He said, you hoo <laughs> 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 you your room service you know just really i mean i was stunned and i don't mean this wrong but in, in, in particular in south la or in, in south in the southern part mm -hmm. um everybody was just genuinely fun they were sweet people they you know i mean and you could tell it wasn't like okay we're gonna put on our our be polite to the guest stay face they were just genuinely nice people yeah. they really were Good. um the uh the holiday inn express was very nice except for the fact i mean we opened the doors and looked at a wall with bricks and bars right. on the wall and right. whatever across the way but it was so you had the, the scenic room yeah we did we did now had we been three stories up we might have been looking back at the airport but yeah uh, right. you know we yeah. got we got the bundle deal anyway but getting the uh, getting the car at the airport could really couldn't have been much easier uh the funny part was is that and once again i am a goob i'm not an international traveler uh, we get to the airport and the lady says she gets us signed up and we walk out. This is Alamo. And she, <laughs> we walk out in the parking lot and she says, any of these SUVs here, you know, any of these, and they're like a Ford, I mean, a Tundra and a, you know, a, you know, Ford Escape and a, all these other cars, you know, and, and uh, I'm looking around and I'm like, well, what about, what about the way you like that one? And then a couple got in that one. And what, what, what about the Nissan? I remember what, what, well, no, they're getting in that one. And by the time we get through thinking around, there's like two or three cars left and you know, it's us and a Ford escape, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, once again, a goob, we've yeah. talked about this. And you've you been and more privately. decisive. You could have you and I buy you and I buy used cars. We pay them off and we drive them till the wheels fall off. Uh -huh. We're practical people. That's, that's just what it is. Yeah, Last time I drove a 2021 model car was never, you know, yeah, I mean, and I, the, the electronics, the backup, the cameras, the, <clears throat> right. it's nice. It's very, very, very nice. Even the, the entry levels were very nice. Uh, we spent Did a it day parallel there. park for you. I'm sorry. Did it parallel park for you? 
no, no, we got the, see, had we got the luxury model and here, here's the deal. You know, we, we bundled that. this through the, the airport. Uh -huh. We got there and I was like, this is nice. You know, and Diane's got an older Lexus uh, LX3 or RX 350 and really nice, really nice. Yep. Uh, and she says, uh, well, you know, I wonder what it would, what it would cost to upgrade. I'm like, well, let's call the guy, you know, El Alamo. He goes through, you know, yeah. The upgrade would be $146 a day. Yeah. Click well. and we're done. Exactly. We're, we're back. I'm, it ain't that nice. You know, yeah. no, don't need the upgrade. So we spent another little, a little while in, I think we got two days at the, in LA and then we start driving up the West coast. Uh, and we go before we get up there, we go through Hollywood. We see the Hollywood sign. We go to Hollywood and vine, which is, uh, a little slimy, little greasy area. Seedy uh, not, is the word. Seedy would be the word. Seedy would be, but you know, what's funny is like, here's Hollywood and vine half block down the street. 12 story building, huge sign on the side of it. The home of Scientology. <laughs> what? Right here at Hollywood and Vine? What? And we go back up. I took some pictures. I'm, I, you know, because L. Ron Hubbard. Be I'll careful just leave now. it there. Huh? <laughs> no, say nothing. it. Say something. No, Come on. No, no, nothing. Keep going. Okay. Um, L. Ron Hubbard. L, uh, aliens apparently have communicated with him apparently. So, uh -huh. that, and that was in, that was very in keeping with the uh, Hollywood and vine thing. Uh, yeah, right. But, and there was, it, it's not what I would have thought, but it's nice. And you know, it's funny. I'm looking at these stars on the walk. There's yep. no lady Gaga. There's no, it's all everybody from our generation or our parents' generation, you know, Jimmy Durante, right. WC fields and, and old school Johnny cash, you know, and, and Diane's like Johnny cash. Cool. You know, yeah. um, from the parking deck, we see the Hollywood sign and, uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to get in trouble for this. So Diane, we're driving down the road. We're going through the nice end of town. And Diane says, so is this, this rodeo drive they keep talking about? And I'm like, I, I think they call it rodeo, honey. And she's like, looks like rodeo to me. Yeah. So we literally drive down the road where they filmed the Beverly Hillbillies. You know, we drive up to, into Bel Air, which is unbelievable. And, and Diane has been there. You know, she's been to California 25 years ago or something like that. And I said, well, what do you remember? She said, it wasn't this green in the parts we went to, you know? And uh, so, you know, and it's beautiful blue skies every day. It's great weather. Yep. Dry, unbelievably dry, except right. in Bel Air, apparently, where everything gets watered automatically, you know? So we then started heading up about sunset. We started heading up to uh, Santa Barbara and stop at some parks along the way along pch and it is it is phenomenal and i can out understand. in public everybody wearing a mask nobody wearing no, a mask no no just okay. in stores okay just in stores all right uh and uh you know we're trying to get used to that you know did you bring your mask thing you know and yep stop at some of the state parks which are phenomenal but i mean everything everything is brown and dead everything and i'm like mm -hmm. man it's a good thing this stuff's drought tolerant because there's nothing and, you know, I'm looking back in Arkansas at 60 to 70 inches of rain a year, mm -hmm. uh, and they get three to five inches a year. And, uh, I'll, I'll tell the rest of that story here in a minute, but <clears throat> anyway, drive on up to Santa Barbara. It is fantastic. It is phenomenal. Uh, beautiful blue skies the whole time we're there probably better part of a week. We go up to Savoy, Selkvoy. Uh, we drive on up a little more north to uh, some of the state park or the city parks. There's a city park up there. Uh, and you, we come down over the top of the ridge. We've driven 11 miles to the end of this dead end road. And we come up over the top of the ridge. And on the left-hand side is uh, a naval training base. I'm trying to think of a military training base. Uh, Pennington? Uh, no, uh, uh, Pendleton. Pendleton is to the north of us. And there's this 500-acre state park. And have y'all mapped this out or y'all just, oh, are y'all just vamping as you go? We're just vamping as we yeah, go. We, okay. we get in the car and say, you know, which way does your nose point today? Right, you know? Well, that's kind of what I figured, but yeah. I'll and we ask. go to uh, Slava, which is a little bitty German style town. Uh, and it's completely German looking the whole thing. Yep. Uh, on the way over there, we go over to a couple of wine country places. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. But anyway, we, we coming into the state park and I have to remember the name of the state park as we come over the hill. Uh, you know, there's a military camp to the north and there's 500 acres and you drive down and there's this, it's, it's noon and maybe 65 degrees. And there's this huge thick fog just now still rolling in off the, off the, the, uh, the ocean. And we're like at noon, the fog. 
And we go down and have a burger at this little place. And it's a little bitty state park at the end of the end of the end of the end of the road. Camp Pendleton's to the north, uh, more military procedures to the south. And it's this little window. And I asked the lady what it was like. She said, oh, it was gorgeous this morning. And then the fog rolled in. And I said, yeah, she said, now it's just cold and damp. And I'm, we're, you know, we're talking last of October, you know. And uh, I asked the guy on the way out, I said, there's a sign that says no, no surfing before 6 a.m. I said, do you, you really have to keep people out before? He said, sir, people try and sneak in here all the time. I'm like, you're joking. I said, you know what? It's got to be cold. He said, you will never see anybody here without a wetsuit. Right. I was like, really? He said, nobody can. I mean, we, we weren't, we weren't 30 miles north of, 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 uh, of uh, Santa Barbara. But still, we kind of used Santa Barbara as a home base, kind of went back and forth. And some of the roads had been closed because they were putting power lines back up where the fire had gotten to them and blah, 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 blah. And we saw uh, Cal Fire a lot. Cal Fire was actually staying at our hotel. Some of the people were. And man, you talk about weary people. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. Yeah, what a brutal job. Oh, it really is. It really is. But, you know, so we spent a week in that part, then came back down to Long Beach and uh, hopped on right beside the Queen Mary, hopped on a Carnival cruise ship with a lot of mask. Uh, and so that one of the reasons I wanted to do this show. Okay. Now, now COVID and all that. So what, what are the precautions getting on a ship? You have to have, we, we, before we left Santa Barbara, we had to have a PCR test or whatever. Uh, the, basically we had to have a test within 48 hours of getting on the boat that showed we were negative. Okay. We had to have vaccination records and okay. we had to wear a mask. Okay. So that was about it. So we get on board and I, I <clears throat> I'm, you know, I'm trying to follow some cruise news. Uh, we get on board where the Spruce Goose used to be. There's this enormous uh, building where that used to be. And that's where they process you in and out now. Um, got on the cruise ship. And y'all are, uh, y'all are grizzled veterans of cruise ship. Well, grizzled no. veterans, pretty much. We've been on like four, I think. Okay. Well, I, I would consider <clears> that <throat> a grizzled veteran. Yeah. Not as grizzled as we might look. Um, but everything we've done has been Galveston, Miami, okay. uh, Fort Lauderdale, the, the, the Gulf. Well, I've never been on one at all. What? So. Really? No, no. I tell you what, now I have is no the desire. It, it holds no well, allure for me. Well, now would be the time if you wanted to, if Rhonda wanted to, you know, that. Although, you know, although Mike Nicolosi, you know, said that he, yeah. he, he had the same sentiment, but now he, he loves them. So really, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to poke his brain and see. Well, not only that now let's remember. He got and converted. At, as we hit the button, we're recording on 11, 11, uh, and Mike's show drops this Friday, I think. So yeah. Hoping. Mike's Mike's show. Well, we're time, we're time shifting our, our audience, but yeah, it, sorry. It, it will, yeah. it will release tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, 11, so it'll, 12, be, it'll be over a week old by the time people see this. Yeah. But my point is go back and look at Mike's show at 11, 12 and yeah, he, exactly it comes out. And anyway, no, um, th this was kind of kind of the best of both worlds actually okay good they they had a crew of 1350 people roughly man yeah yeah well this is the panorama the uh the carnival panorama okay and uh i found out later that we were at half capacity we were about 2600 people. Well, that's what i was gonna ask well okay so the the restaurants weren't crowded <clears throat> the um but, but was there's that, been was a, that was that intentionally or was that just oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah they, okay yeah, well but both they, they've okay. intentionally they've tried to limit them but at the same time they sure couldn't have filled the ship up anyway okay uh i'm wanting to say we got a balcony uh a balcony on the eight, seventh floor uh with a really nice room and all our amenities and everything and i'm thinking it was a little over thirteen hundred dollars so okay. i mean 650 a person 700 yeah. a person yeah. something like that uh, with with gratuities and whatever right. else you wanted to do so it yeah it was a heck of a bargain at this point um and, and, and the facilities are super clean it's really nice um there's been a, a huge sea change in, in in cruising that i had not anticipated or noticed um it used to be you went to the uh, form, formal dining room and there were like two or three seatings in the formal dining room Okay. And in those seatings, they would serve you this fantastic meal that you really couldn't compare anywhere else on the ship. That food quality seems to have gone down significantly. And this is where they dance and do the, you yeah. know, the, the waiters dance and sing yeah. and whatever. And it's, it's kind of, it's a lot of fun, but, but all that to say the food quality there wasn't that great, but uh, 
places like guys uh who's the guy guy on uh oh who's the guy on home and not home and garden but the food channel guy ferrari or whatever yeah uh they have the guy ferrari burger center and those okay. are free they're included in your meal the formal dinner is included in your meal but, but the formal dinner was the one that <clears throat> the quality wasn't what it had yeah, been wasn't, wasn't what it should be wasn't what why. it used to be for us uh and but to, to be fair, uh, they have little rock lobsters. And so you can have lobster some night or whatever, and you right. can order as many as you want. And I, I say that, are you uh, a because, food snob? No, I'm not. No, I'm not a food snob and I'm not a food hog either. I mean, we just, you know, we eat till we're good and then we're good, you know? Okay. But, uh, they said one of the guy waiters told me one time that the guy had one guy had ordered 46 lobsters and they said at 46, they, they cut him off. Not at, not at 38 or 25, Randy, but 46 lobster tails. Well, you could have let the guy hit 50, couldn't you? I, th I thought so. I mean, what's another two <laughs> between friends, right? Man, I mean, hey, lie. what's what's another two between gluttony? I mean, uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah there's that. Anyway. Uh, but but they, wasn't they a clamp, have, it's kind of a thing. Obviously. Exactly. Get him a sandwich. Yeah, a sandwich. big boy yeah. sandwich. Yeah. Well, no, but well, what's, what's actually going on here is that they're moving to um, kind of a premium um, optional like they had a 455 for Fahrenheit 455 steakhouse, which was a really, really high end steakhouse. Yeah. Uh, they had a uh, Benny Hanna kind of thing, which we went to. Now, I'm an idiot. Um, so you can, yeah. you just go in and you, you go in anywhere and eat. Is that included? Well, Is it, what, see, how does yeah, this work? Yeah. That, 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 I guess that's what I'm trying to explain the sea change to be, because you used to be able to go into the Lido deck, which was this, there used to be nearly 24 hour a day buffet of anything you wanted anything okay. and it was right. above cafeteria grade but it was cafeteria kind of food las you know? vegas ish yeah yeah exactly and it okay. was a good buffet but it was yeah, open yeah. all the time right well they've closed those hours down a lot i mean a okay. lot uh and now they have a seafood shack where you can for eight bucks you can buy you know a lobster pool boy or something like this so the, the, what the deal is, is that they have a base. They usually say it's all inclusive because it includes all your dining and your drinks and your whatever. Yeah, well, right. now drinks are a little premium and now they have, there's, there's the seafood shack. There's ax and pig, which is like a proof pub. There's uh, the sushi restaurant. There's the Benihana restaurant. There's the, uh, and those are included, but the other ones, the higher end ones, you go, you got to pay you. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm telling you the ones that aren't included. Oh, they're not included. Yeah, those are not included. The Lido oh, deck, the, the, the basically the marketplace and yeah. the uh, fine dining, those are included. And even the guy's burgers are included. And there's a little okay. pizza shack out back and it's included. But okay. the, the, the seafood shack is not included, which we saw that a few years ago. Uh, the, the nice steakhouse wasn't included, which we've seen that before, too. And how does that work? Like a regular restaurant? You just go in and they give you a bill and you pay it? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, you put it on your room because it, it's a okay. cardless thing. You yeah, just yeah, swipe it, it on your room card. Okay. Uh, which, you know, if you haven't been cruising, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, that that's one of the things that most people don't realize is that after you get on the ship, you don't need cash. You don't need to carry a wallet. You don't need right. a whatever, but you have your room, your room card with you. Uh, actually you swipe your card. It lets you in the room. You, as soon as you walk in the room, you put your card in the slot. And that turns your lights on and keeps your lights on. As soon as you take your card, it kicks off in two minutes. Oh. So it's, it's ways that they save money and yeah, yeah. save energy and keep, make sure you keep up with your card. But no, the, the uh, seafood place, the, the hibachi, the, the sushi. The, are those places the, crazy expensive or are they kind of sort of in line? or how the, hibachi, the hibachi, I think Diane and I had, I think we had a, a, a little uh, carafe of sake. And we had the hibachi steak and the hibachi lobster or something like that. It was about a hundred bucks and it ain't cheap, but it's not, you know, I've okay. seen more. Okay. Uh, I would say, I would call it. <clears throat> I mean, cause you kind of are a captive audience, right? I mean, you're a captive audience and, and there's nothing saying you have to pay this. You could go down to the Lido deck and eat for free. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, or you could go back to the, the, uh, right. the formal dining and eat for free. So it's just kind of all optional. We ate there. We ate at one of the, um, uh, there was an Italian restaurant upstairs. So there's like nine restaurants that are pretty. How many did you try? How many restaurants did you try? Um, we weren't trying to just do them, but we ended up using maybe six. Okay. You know? But, but if you've never been on a cruise ship, there's some unbelievable, crazy laws that you won't imagine. Uh, they have duty free shopping on board only after you're 10 miles off the coast. 
Okay. And and they don't often open the casino up until you're 10 miles off the coast. Yep. And uh, so, and I'm just being hypothetical, but let me ask you, Randy, at what age can you drink at 10 miles off the coast? 21. So, yeah, it's um, 18, 14, 12. <laughs> it's the internet. It's, 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 it, you're at, you're at sea, you're at sea and you really get a sense of how laws are. Well, I don't uh, drink, I don't drink at any age, but I'm, no, no, I is, understand, what is but I'm just, what is the answer? Uh, I saw we people as young as 16, having a glass of wine. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, what is, what is the national law? What's the, you know, I have what, no what, idea. Yeah. It's maritime law and, and, uh, they're big on security. And, and uh, by the way, I, I meant to tell this and, and the people, I hope the people are still listening and thank you audience. Um, you don't think people have tuned out things. already? Well, it could be, could be <laughs> that, you know, I, I have the voice that helps people go to sleep, Randy. That's yeah, that's what we do. Um, but let's talk about the, the pandemic age. Um, so Randy, you, you, there's a big placard in the middle of these, there's like six or eight, uh, elevators in the front the aft and the port. Okay. And <clears throat> there's like these clusters of elevators and there's a big illuminated glass sheet in the middle that here's you are, and here's where everything else is. Okay. And you go over to a little console that's about this big, this wide. And it says, he's describing seven, a small six, iPad, five, kind of a size. Right? And, and exactly. And you push on it. Okay. And then it says R and you look up and elevator R will be ready for you. I mean, instantly, instantly it's all computerized. Okay. And you walk over and R opens and it's fast and, and you stand there. You don't press a button. You don't, mm -mm, it's contactless. You oh, literally. Yeah, you press the button like the iPad. What floor you're going to go to, where you want to go, it automatically and then you just assigns go get that, in that one, and it takes you there. Mm -hmm. R is going to take you to level seven, and there's there's not even a button for you to push inside. Interesting. How about that? Yeah. Um, on top of the whole pandemic structure, you know, I don't, you've never been on a cruise, but I'll explain. When, when you get in, they will not set sail. They will not set sail until there's been a safety briefing. Period. And they will come and hunt, knock you down, and okay. uh, we need to show you how this seat, how this life jacket works. Here's the whistle. Here's the light. Here's the bell. Here's the whatever. Uh, and they are dead serious about it. And, and um, what does that? I mean, but what does that look like? I mean, that's not one on one with everybody, is it? Well, is what it? we did what we, in the age of pandemic before the pandemic. Okay, before the pandemic, what they would do is is they would say, okay, go to your muster station, which is going to be M five or whatever. And so you're walking down this beautiful you know, lined corridor with gorgeous carpet and, and, and wood on the walls or whatever. And you press these crack, crack these open doors and go out these double doors. And here's all the, the lifeboats. And, a, and what and did a, you call it? A what station? Muster. Okay. Muster M U S T E R. Yeah. Okay. Muster station. And basically it's an accumulation. It's a place where you must gather to get on your lifeboat. So okay. if there's a crisis, you yeah, go yeah. to M five or whatever. Yeah, well, it would help to know where that's at. Well, they won't do Jack Diddley squat till you know how to do that. Well, good. Well, in times past, I mean, we had men, women, children, hundred degrees standing outside blazing yeah. sun right here. And, and, and everybody has to stand there till everybody comes. Yeah. And then they give the children wristbands. If they get misplaced, they, I mean, it's a, it's a real system. And here's so how you heckle all the people that came late and made you stand <clears> out exactly. there. Exactly. So everybody else has to wait till the people that come late. Well, they don't do that anymore, but they still have to have the safety briefing. So when Diane and I got on board, there's a guy holding a little sign that says muster station five this way. And when you go back that way, there's no muster station five. You're not at the boat. There's just a guy that shows you how to use the, the, the life jacket. And he tells you these are under your bed in your unit and you and go he, back and, to your unit. And, and he's, and he's addressing a group of people or yeah, just, he's addressing a group okay. every five to eight minutes and gotcha, another gotcha, group. Gotcha. Family. As soon okay. as there's a group of just five to 10 people, he'll address them okay. and then they're out. Now we're all standing there wearing masks. So it's not too big of a group in the first. Now, how do they, how do they keep track of the people that have already gone through that? How when do they know in, when you walk in, they scan your card. Oh, and they know that you you've had your training or that you haven't. Now you're supposed to go back to the room. And by the way, uh, this is another thing. Last time we took a cruise a couple of years ago, and this panorama is the bomb. This is one of the nicest ships I've ever been on. Uh, but when you get on the ship, 
uh, and you scan your card, they've got like a 39 inch TV at the foot of your bed. And it's got all the movies. It's got all the cable. It's got all the information you need. It's got cameras showing the front and behind the side view, everything. Uh, and then there, the security briefing or the safety briefing is done by Shaquille O'Neal of all people. And he shows you in between with other people. You know, I'm sure he the, just donated his time to do that. I'm so. certain it was free, probably free. That's and, a you know, he's day. such a great, eloquent spokesman. I love you know, him. He has the dialect for it. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, not. <laughs> but anyway, no, they're, they're really serious. And, and they've done, gone some great lengths. They have gone to great lengths to uh, make it safe mm -hmm. and to basically make it as contactless as possible. But now the us, kind of people that were on there. I mean, what, what does, what does this crowd look like? Give me an uh, idea. the people that sat beside us at the formal dinner. Uh, -huh. uh they had, uh, earplugs, nose plugs. He was in a thrash band and had just got through uh, finishing a tour and they, uh, were tattooed all up. And then the people on the other side of us, one was an insurance salesman. So they're Fresno. your kind of people I'm, we're right in. We're right there. Look, let me show you my, well, <laughs> right. anyway. Yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> so a very more, diverse crowd wildly diverse and you might think that there's just a bunch of um uh gray hairs probably the minority i didn't see many i didn't see many senior citizens at all really well i'm only thinking of the time of year yeah i'm only yeah, thinking yeah. i mean i'm not thinking about i'm not thinking about it being a geriatric crowd mm -hmm. necessarily i'm just you you think okay well kids are in school and mm -hmm. and you weren't you didn't do this over a holiday no period no. so well, and for people that are, would wonder, you know, why did we pick the time frame we picked? And the bottom line is, is that October the 15th was Diane's last text deadline. Mm -hmm. So October the 16th, we were the heck and gone. Yeah. You know, just we pretty could. fried and ready to get out of Dodge. Exactly. Completely. It didn't matter where we go. We were right. gone. Right. Uh, and, and not like this is such a rough place to be, but you know, we just wanted no. to change the scenery. Yeah. Uh, so we hop on the boat and it takes us, uh, oh, by the way, oh, crap, stop. So we've had Greg on the show many times. Yep. We've had Alana on the show many times. Yep. I, from the boat, I'm taking pictures and across the horizon, I can see at least 45 freighters sitting in the Harbor waiting to be unloaded. Yep. So I sent Greg and Alana a picture and I said, here's the stuff you need for your, <laughs> for yeah. Your, here's, here's all your supplies you that you can't get. Here's the supplies you can't get your cups so we, and your to go containers and everything. That's exactly what I was thinking. And, and uh, um, um, Alana's husband, uh, Owen, I think I can't, I can't think of his name, Owens. Uh, but he was like, Hey, listen, can you swim out and get us a few boxes of so-and-so, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we go out of long beach and it takes quite a while to get out of long Daniel. beach. I'm sorry. Daniel. 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 So we go start. Going I've got a cold. I went brain dead. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm problem. sitting here thinking I know his name. What's wait, what wait, you've got me thinking it now. But here's the problem. You've got an excuse and I don't see because I yeah. I, you know I, I'm I'm well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you my excuse in just a second. Go ahead. Uh so we're going down the coast the coast of California. Now did you tell we, us where you started from? We started in Long, Long Beach, uh right okay. there beside the Queen Mary. And I wanted to take a tour of the Queen Mary and we didn't get to, but loading was not that bad. Everybody had mask on. Uh, you know, it's kind of the same. Uh, you have to have your passport because you're going to get it off in another country. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, you're not being a a, a cruiser of a, a, a. You'll need to hear that part of the story. So you basically take your passport, you prove your passport. They give you a card. Well, they don't give you a card. When you get on the on the ship, your cards attached to your door, and you swipe your door and let you in, and they, and they have your bags delivered within a few minutes. And it's a it's a really smooth operation, but you would think you're going to need your passport everywhere else. No, 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 really. And I'll explain this in just a sec. Cause you've got that card. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we so set out, set sail. Do I? You've been pre vetted. I've been pre vetted, but it goes even further than that. I've been facially ID'd and that facial ID is on my card. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I mean, what happens if I lose my card? How do I prove who I am? <clears throat> Look at the facial recognition. Well, that's you. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Just so when we NSA, get off the boat, prove who I am. Yeah, when we get off the boat and back on the boat, lift up your hat, Mr. Simpson. You know, pull off your sunglasses. Okay. Think the computer would go, yeah, that's you. Okay, so it would check me in and out. You know, interesting. So we're going down the coast of California. Uh, internet was uh, internet package was pretty decent speed. It wasn't bad. 
Uh, but that was uh, 70 bucks a week or something. I think something like that. Oh, okay. uh, I got myself the business plan because I knew I would have to do remote and that kind of yeah, thing. I got yeah. Diane the um, social package so she could just post on Facebook and some yeah. stuff. And it was very acceptable, very acceptable. Uh, so we're puttering down about 16 knots and it takes us two days to get down to Puerto Vallarta, way down the coast, way down past Baja, way down there. And we stop at Puerto Vallarta and it is to die for. Now, when we scan, we just get off and it's this gorgeous port. Uh, and we have arranged, which is kind of a, uh, it was kind of a splurge for us, but we arranged for a private tour guide and there's this lady in this big bus and she's just waiting on us and all we have to do is get through the tourist trap and there's a lot of tourist trap uh -huh. out to the shell station and she's waiting for us and she waves her hands and i wave my hand and and uh, i show her it's us and she starts giving us a tour of puerto vallarta and the same tour includes uh and she takes us up to the chapel where richard burton and elizabeth taylor used to live and we literally walk in and one whole wall is, wi is wide open, no railing, no nothing. And it's five big arches that overlook the entire city and the chapel and everything. It is to die for. And this guy is trying to, it's an Airbnb and he can't get it filled up, Randy. How about that? And that, those are the odds, huh? I'm thinking I can help him. You know what I mean? Yeah, you probably could. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so she gives us a whole You give him a business town. card? I did give him some business cards and we've already talked. Good. His name is Victor Good. and Victor. One of the first things I said to Victor was, I said, you know, ours is nothing like this, but in hot Springs village, Arkansas, I have a live webcam. So you can see what it looks like. He was like, webcam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, La, La Chapel, the chapel, and it's a hotel restaurant and to die for it. Uh, and once again, everybody is wonderfully sweet. Oh, by the way, did you bring your pesos, uh, Randy? No, because you're, you're probably going to need a potty break and you have oh, to pay okay. for bathrooms. Yeah. There you go. All the bathrooms are about a dollar. So, right, yeah. Right. But our tour guide had it aligned. So we would be at the city center, which is the, the governmental business and they had free toilets. Did y'all so have pesos? Oh yeah. Well, we no. converted some pesos. I, I'll tell you my next story in just a second. You're a patient <laughs> audience, my friends. Anyway. So, uh, we well, try to, uh, what? This is a journey. We're taking, it is a journey. journey. And I appreciate your patience. Yeah. We're, we're in Puerto Vallarta. We come back up and it is of all the places, the places that we went, uh, it's the one I think I'd go back. We, we, we might go back in January and spend some time because it's, uh, the beaches are not just gorgeous, but it's got a real art feel. It's got a great city center. It's just, it's, it's really, it's just a stunningly beautiful place. And she took us to a, uh, have you ever been there before? No, no, no. Okay. I've never been to the Western coast of Cali of, of uh, Mexico before. Okay. We've been to Cozumel and Cancun a lot of times, but, but not okay. in this area. All right. So we get back on trip and, and I mean, it's wow. It's wow. You know, you're, you're in this, you're looking down from the ship, which is 15 stories tall and you're looking across the Harbor and we're looking back across the mountains and they say every day about five o'clock, sure shooting every day about five o'clock, here comes the rainstorms from the, from the rainforest. And it's, it's just Oh my Lord. It's just to die for. We set sail out of, out of Puerto Vallarta and uh, we were there from 9 AM to probably 6 PM that day. It was a long day. This was the first stop. Right? Exactly. Okay. And we turn around and go up to Mazatlan, which I was not familiar with at all. Mazatlan is probably a three or four hour car ride from Puerto Vallarta. Okay. Uh, and it's through the jungles and, mm -hmm. okay. uh, and, and when we pulled out, um, I was like, well, let's just see how this is. Uh, and when you pull up, it's an industrial port that smells like diesel and there's trucks running up and down and there's cargo being unloaded and freighters and whatever. And it's not really appetizing or appealing, but uh -huh. they've got a shuttle that runs you back out to the main gate. Well, we, we, for, I think it was $35 a piece. We did the uh, carnival uh, ride and go, and they're, they're, and be clear on this. If you haven't explained it before, carnival has has expeditions that they approve, that they okay. will say, okay, this is a carnival expro approved expedition, and you'll get your money back if it doesn't work. If there's a problem, we'll tell you, stand behind it. Blah 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 blah. As opposed to walking outside the tourist zone and saying, hey, I want a taxi and take me anywhere we want to go. Right. So if the you're taxi breaks own. down and you can't be back to the boat tough luck too bad if if their if their expedition breaks down they will hold the boat for you so yeah big difference 
It would be a big difference. So we, we go over, we see some, uh, some cliff divers, uh, about an 80 foot cliff dive. They drop us off in the downtown city center. You didn't which we try see. that. I didn't, I thought yeah. about it, but you know, yeah. actually I really didn't have as good a tan as I wanted Randy. Yeah. I didn't want didn't to want show, to show off, off all this whiteness, you right. know? Right. Uh, so they took us to a downtown area and, um, here's the story. Here's where it really gets good. Randy stunning city chapel. Uh, we, we walk around this, this whole city block is this unbelievable church. I'll, I'll send some pictures we can tag. And, uh, we walk about a block away and there's this place that's rated like 4.8 stars and it's a place to eat. It's a, you know, I can, I can struggle by enough Me- Mexican or enough Spanish to figure out where we're at. Mm-hmm. And we order, we're sitting on the side and we're eating al fresco, you know, and, and they have a restrooms so that we don't have to pay. So, you know, and they take, they take debit cards. And, um, so I don't think anything about it. And I tell Diana, I said, you know, I'd kind of like a beer, you know, can we have a beer out here on the sidewalk? And the lady's like, yes, yes, you can go to the bar. I'm like, go to the bar. I walk the next block up and I walk in the bar and as soon as you walk in, there's this, this wall and it says Entrado Salanto, you know, and you're so okay. Entrado. I know enough to do that, you know? So I walk in, boom, 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 boom. Their boom box is screaming. And it's like a scene out of a bad, cheap movie where everybody just watches the gringo walk through the building, you know? Oh. And I walk up to the bar and the waitress is staring at me and the bartender staring at me. And there's a guy on his laptop. And I said, um, uh, couple of beers and he was like uh i said pacifico pacifico which is what they brew there in mazathon and he said pacifico pacifico a dollar a piece and i'm like wow a dollar a piece 80 cents 80 pesos for him oh, okay pretty cheap for a beer and so you know they have the huge growler that makes you look like the street alcoholic and i'm like no 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 we're good we're good i don't need that and so i said card no 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 and, and you know the well-prepared tourist whoops out the hundred dollar bill and goes change. And the, 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 the <laughs> you're shaking your head and this looks kind of, yeah, I've never been there. And that's yeah, the, the that's waitress looks, the waitress looks and the bartender looks and the bartender looks at the guy on the laptop and the guy on the laptop goes, yes, yes. Hang on. He pulls up his calculator. Uh, 1800 pesos which is about 10% under what the regular legal, the real number is, but you know, I'm in a bar and they're going to give me pesos and it, you know, and I'm going to walk out with my skin, you know, and I don't think anything about it. We go out, eat back on the, 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 uh, and it's like a bold chicken. It's really soft and del- tender, but you know, we eat a little, we don't eat a lot, you know, we just don't want to be go around hungry and go back in and we're waiting on the bus to pick us up and carry us, you know, it's a pick and go type deal, you know? And, uh, uh, the guy who had originally met us come back up and he's it's his name's Eric. And we start talking with him and he wants to know more about American culture. And he wants to know more about blah, 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 blah. And I tell him about Rick Steves, the guy that does travel, you know, and he's fascinated at this guy that makes a living doing travel guide, you know? And I said, yeah, I said, it's kind of like walking into the bar with a hundred dollar bill. And he said, what you did, what amigo. And I said, well, walked into a bar and got changed. You walked into a bar across from this interest And I said, yeah, he said, no problem. He said, with a hundred dollars. I'm like, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Gringo lives to tell another story. You know, we go down to the far end. They take us to the go to the gold coast and it is Acapulco times 10 squared. It is gorgeous. There's huge rocks. There's channel islands out on the other side. It's, and, and there's, you know, there's 40 story skyscrapers that are stunningly beautiful. It's amazing. We get back on the bus and start riding back. The bus breaks down three separate times. They finally come and pick us up in another bus, but everybody's gracious and fun. I mean, it's no big deal. We get on and the this bus. This is a carnival approved thing. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so you don't have to. And worry. this is, yeah, so we're covered. So gotcha. we get back on the cruise and, you know, you got to go through the tourist shop on the way in. And, and, uh-huh. uh, and, and by the way, let's talk about Mexican drugstores. You do not have to have a prescription for anything in a Mexican drugstore, period. Yep. So they have what they call vanity pharmacias as you come and go that sell Retin-A and uh, Xanax and and, uh, Mm -hmm. painkillers and, you know, whatever you want to buy. But we go through there and then they have the duty-free liquor, which is not cheap and whatever. And then you go and get on the boat. So when you go and get on the boat, they scan your face again, figure out who you are. Yep. Send you back down your way. And so we get back. And so this has been, and we're worn out. I mean, we're absolutely worn out. Now, every morning, Diane and I 
we'll have a, our card hung out by 3 a.m. is what they say. And it says we want uh, two pieces of toast, a bowl of cereal, oh, okay. egg muffin, blah, 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 blah. And they just come and deliver it the next morning, whatever time you tell them. So we go out on the, the veranda, the little patio, and we have our breakfast out there or just overlooking the sea. It's a wonderful luxury. It's just fantastic. Uh, so we do that the next morning and we're at Cabo. Now, remember, we spent two days getting from, from Long Beach all the way down to uh, uh, Port of Arda. And then we day, one day back up to Mazatlan. We next day we're at Cabo. And so <clears throat> we, we, we're looking at Cabo and going, you know, we're parked in the middle of, uh, one of the highlights of Cabo is they have a, 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 a horseshoe shaped log, a horseshoe shaped rock that's standing out of the water and there's a canal where you can go under it. And we're parked looking right at it because our ship is in the middle of the bay and we're ruining a lot of people's good view, I promise. And we get on a tender and I'm like, I don't know if I feel like riding a tender back and forth. So it's this boat that maybe holds 20 people, 30 people. And they shuttle us back in probably three miles back into Cabo. And we get there and Diane and I are always like, you know, tourist is overrated. We don't want to do that whole tourist thing. And we find a guy named uh, Omar and Omar has a cart with a little pedal cart on it. And he said, where do you want to go? We said, you know, and, and the, so everybody was getting off the boat at nine. It was the earliest you could get off. And we had to get back on the boat at like two. So the, the Cabo was really, really, really short. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So we have him pedal us over to a, uh, basically a timeshare beach that he knows is a private beach. I think I paid the guy 60 bucks. It was the best money ever spent because we get our own tour guide. We're on a private tour guide. We get to go to a private beach. We have lunch at the beach best money ever spent. Okay. He pedals us back. We got lots of time. We ride the tender back. We have a great time. Uh, and got to talk with him a while. He's, he's actually got a family in Colorado and he sends the money back and it's, everybody's got an interesting story in a tourist town. So we get on the boat and we start heading back at record speed. We went down about 16 knots. We went up about 22 knots against the wind and so when you go outside, we're going about 20 knots and the wind is coming down south at about 20 knots. So the wind feels like it's 40 miles an hour in your face. Still nice, still warm, still pretty. Diane and I are sitting at the rear of the ship having one of these little just seafood sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking out the back railing of the deck and the sea does this and this and this and this. So you're trying to you outrun can... weather? Well, we're not just out. What, what we've done is, is that you can take a leisurely trip down yeah. to, uh, to Puerto Vallarta and make these other stops, but to get from Cabo back up, they got to hoof it the whole time. And so last time they did this and we were in Galveston that we did this really fast trip back. Uh, it's a rougher ride. It's a lot rougher ride. Now that said the, the panoramic was a, the panorama was a fantastic vessel, but it was a little wearing and we got off. So Saturday morning we get off and it's like, Hey, move your butts out. We got to get new people in. Yeah. And so little did I know that apparently I, I picked up a little something. I didn't know I was going to carry. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah. So meme, that was Saturday. A parasite. Saturday. Yeah. Maybe a parasite, maybe a, maybe, I don't know, maybe a norovirus as my doctor later would call it. Uh, it was basically the nine pound weight loss program. I was not planning on. <laughs> yeah, for, I did yeah, not anticipate that. that. Mm -hmm. um so we drive to not a fun uh, way to lose nine pounds it's but. not a nice way to lose nine pounds we we drive to um we get a rental car we drive to um san diego down near san diego we stay uh just outside um just north of san diego which is fantastic uh at the indigo hotel yeah, overlooking the, the ocean never changes yeah oh it's really it really is beautiful oh by the way while we were gone on that week vacation mm -hmm. it rained in la one yeah. lady said it rained nearly three quarters of an inch and she just stayed inside the whole time Yeah, because it was, it was just too icky, too icky yeah, to exactly. get outside. Right. Three yeah. quarters. That doesn't even knock down the dust in our no, no. <laughs> So <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'm at the, we're at the, uh, this really nice hotel. We drive down to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Marine museum in San Diego. Then we went back up to the coast and we went to one of the, uh, the, uh, lighthouses that overlooks the, the port there in san diego yep. 
uh, thousands and thousands of military crosses. It's a, it's a military graveyard. Yep. Um, very moving, very moving indeed. And, and we're up on top of the mountain looking at this lighthouse and there's these 270 degree views that are just unbelievable. And we walk down a little bit down the side and there's a little concrete railing or concrete floor and there's a metal railing. And I look on the side and there's a little mount and I realize, and I look over and there's a sign and it talks about how this was a, a gunner position during world war II, where they were waiting, looking for ship, any ships off of the Western coast. And these guys would have 12 to 24 hour shifts and suicidal boredom and just mm -hmm. looking out at the ocean and seeing if there's nothing and there's nothing, you know, mm -hmm. but if there's anything, it's your butt, you know? Right. So uh, get back to the hotel and have a shaking fit, just a convulsion, just shaking my head off and can't figure out what's wrong and uh, get back on the plane Sunday and uh, fly back home, get home Sunday night, still shaking, just feeling rotten, just feeling just completely like a dish rag and uh, come home. We, we got guests downstairs. Forgot about that. Diane says, don't roll the bags, carry the bags so that they don't disrupt the guests. It's about midnight. Good point. I grab these two 40 pound bags and I just huff them back to the, to the bedroom. And I look down and my fingers, and Diane said, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, what? And my fingers are literally white as paper. Apparently this is what hypoglycemic shock looks like right before you pass out. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, go to the, so doctor the last thing you remember later. seeing or pale white fingers. Oh yeah. Yeah. She was like, you, or it looks like there's no blood in your system at all. And I'm usually, you know, and did you pass there. out? I did not. I did not. Uh, got in bed and, and, uh, ate a piece of candy Rhonda gave us. Oh, that's you, right. Yeah, yeah. That's thank right. Thank you so very much. Rhonda, uh, when that's they were, right. were here last time, you dropped us off some Halloween candy, uh, -huh. uh which, you know, Halloween in the village is, eh, you know, eh, yeah. Yeah. Eh, kind of maybe not, but, uh, basically went to the doctor a couple of days later. He said, yeah, you picked up a norovirus and uh, yeah, that's pretty deadly. And they got a lot of them on cruise ships. And uh, I'm glad you did okay. By the way, on the trip back, I meant to tell you, flying back from uh, L.A. to uh, Memphis, there are 168 seats again, same plane. There may have been a dozen seats empty. Everything else was full to the brim. Uh huh. So it would be when you're feeling the, really awful. The moral of the story is, you can have, you know, there and one you flight maybe empty the whole time. I did what? Sorry. And you had to wear a mask the whole yeah, time. Yeah, it felt like you were smothering. It really did. So when we got back to to, Ar to Arkansas, man, we couldn't wait to rip the mask off. And, you know, right. we went into Brinkley, Arkansas and got some uh, uh, pork rinds and uh, filled up the truck. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. We're back we're in home. Arkansas. Yeah, yeah we're, we're home. home. We're home. We're home. Anyway. So how does it feel having have not, not being a resident? So you take a trip like that mm -hmm. and you come home to Hot Springs Village. I got to tell you one last thing about California before we go. I'm talking to a guy in, uh, uh, in greater LA. Well, no, it was just Santa Barbara. It was a Santa Barbara. And we were talking about the area and whatever. He said, this is so nice. He said, this Santa Barbara weather is just fantastic. He said, and you know, he said, the liberals politics don't start until you get up closer to San Diego and, or until you get closer to San Francisco and whatever. And I, you know, I didn't, I intentionally was just, you know, and, uh, you know, as agnostic about that, I didn't say conservative yeah. or, you know, whatever, yeah. but he said, yeah, he said, you know, it, he said, it's a shame that some of the really the more liberal or you know, San Francisco. And he said, they just kind of run things. And he said, we don't all act that way or feel that way. And I thought that's probably where I should have started. You know, the California is not a monolith. It's the sixth largest economy in the world. You know, it can't be a monolith. Uh, but <laughs> I well, and the that? sooner and the sooner person in the crowd here, mm -hmm. you know, there's a boatload that went to California, you know, in and, the fifties, and, and so and I the, mean, an awful have, lot of people from our part of the country have gone there, went to California yeah. back in the fifties. So well, and with our some some of our soon upcoming interviews, we're going to find out a lot of them came back. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know a bunch of them who've come back. <laughs> we have several, but yeah. anyway, I, I say all that to say, um, uh, no, I'm all, all the more grateful for hot Springs village, Arkansas. And, uh, we, we go to bed, I'm looking across the lake. And by the way, I wanted to talk to Gary, who's you know building a house down here. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure that he obey, obeys by the rules. And I'm going to spin the camera around just a little real quick. If I yeah. look out that way, Gary Mouton, Gary Mouton. And you see like just, there's just a little bit, of I see light a light. 
across the blake and uh -huh. the, the focus show yeah um, we we prefer people to keep light pollution to a minimum you know yeah yeah so um it's a beautiful quiet dark evening in the middle of the and i'm looking at you know a million acres of national forest yeah it, it look it, it's a fantastic place and i don't have a beach like that i don't have a yeah. coastline um we have rain it's green it looks yeah. healthy it yep. you know uh man somebody asked yeah. me the other day said well okay so tell us about this place you start so you've started this podcast what you know <laughs> so i have to explain all that first and then I, I and they're like well so i mean is it like i mean is it like the country i said no no it's mm. like it's like a park it's not like country it's not rural like country it's like a park well there's a reason why uh when mr cooper hired uh faye jones to decorate it and design it uh -huh. they used national park brown on the buildings they wanted it to look like a national park and and the stone if you I look at I it, the that. stone in fact, i'm yeah. certain i didn't know that mm -hmm. the now. stone the stone at the front gate yeah. The native stone at the front gate, right. the brown letters, the brown, uh, you know, like you're at a state park, like you're a national park. And yeah. they, that was meant to be evocative of that. And, and as you can tell, it stuck, uh, you know, yeah. because that's what everybody wanted it to be. But, you know, once again, if, if you've never been, the, you listeners who are still here, thank you if you're here. Uh, if you've never been up and down the main road of Hot Springs Village, DeSoto, you're going to see 90% trees and 10% houses, maybe. Yeah. You know, or yeah. maybe a couple of businesses because it was designed that way. It was designed you get a glimpse of a golf course, mm -hmm. but you're not going to have any clue what you're, re you, you don't have a clue where you're really at. I didn't. At I had all. a friend, I had a friend one time that before I turned the GPS on, he said, man, we were in the middle of nowhere. And I said, no, there's a golf course there and two lakes within a mile right here. And like, how do you, man, it can't be. I'm like, there's trees. We kept the trees. It's green. It's beautiful. We keep the trees. Yep. So yeah, yeah well, we're looking forward a, to our next, uh, our next visit. Well, welcome home. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're back. It seemed like you were gone for a month. It seemed that way. And for those of you who don't know, Randy and I usually talk every day to every other day at a bare minimum. And for me being on a boat for two weeks at a, or for a week at a time and being in California and Randy going radio silent, cause he doesn't want to bug me. I know how he is. Yeah. And every once in a while, I'm still like, well, what's going no, on? You, How's texted, going? you texted me something smarmy, you know, early on that, you know, you, what you think I'm going to go 14 days. You think you're going to go 14 <laughs> days without hearing from me or something. <laughs> I will not be ignored. You called call me once, but there was a lot of, there's a lot of texting and stuff going on and, yeah, and pictures. Yeah, well, so hey. yeah, and we'll, we'll have to post, we'll have to post pictures to this episode. Yeah. And, and we're, who knows we're building a media empire and you know, you can't just do that without talking to your partner. You know what I mean? No, well, we've built a media empire. We're, <laughs> we're 160 some odd days in this 160 yeah. days. Who knew? Yeah, wow. we've, we've, we've conquered this demon already. So yeah, well, man. welcome back. I'm glad well, you're thanks. back. I hope batteries are recharged. You, you over your malady. I'm over my malady. Uh, took a little longer than I thought we've actually been you know, for you too. We've actually kind of gotten back in the groove where we're because of the the lower covid numbers and everything we're actually kind of going back to the gym and getting in that shape and spinning and bending and stretching there you go in the mornings it's a little sore but in the afternoons uh -huh. it sure feels a whole lot better than being stove up and yeah well, good and cold oh oh, oh. Uh, one other thing i meant I, I had this idea while i was on the cruise uh i want to do a show soon about how to endure a winter in hot springs village and good. Uh, there's a good tease there is a good tease and I'll, I'll give you a piece of it a part of it in, on, on a cold day when it's damp and dreary and it's just kind of gray uh -huh. there is a sauna room and a hot tub room at the uh the uh, uh, uh the uh, natatorium the indoor heated pool that is delicious really it's uh yeah it really is it kind of warms you to the bone kind of thing and so we, this Diana is at the fitness go, center we're talking about is that yeah, where we're talking yeah, okay yeah, yeah. Where, where you need to go and you need to visit the facilities uh there's a well, huge room walk that trail a, a whole lot probably a 40 by 40 room with a really big hot tub in the middle of it really and they've got lounge chairs all the way around it we'll go get in the hot tub get warmed up you know, sitting by some bubbles and get kind of, you know, um, water massaged and get out and read a book for a while. And it's really nice. Look at it's really, really nice. Look at y'all yeah. just living the good life in hot springs. We're trying. Well. We're trying. Yeah. Well, Hey, somebody needs to do it. <laughs> well, you're next. You're next. Yeah. Well, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Listen, we appreciate you listening. Um, 
come on, it's a podcast. It's a video. You can hit fast forward. You can hit rewind. You can hit pot. Hey, you can hit stop. If you want, I got one call to action. I want you to tell a friend, tell a friend about the show. We appreciate you clicking play and listening and I'll shut up and let you say good night, Dennis. Well, I'll, I'll add one more thing. Cause if I hadn't said enough already tonight, you know, um, at tell a friend, tell the right friend. Cause there's somebody, I know, you know, somebody that would go, you know what? They would really find this interesting, you know? So tell the right friend for hot springs village inside out. I'm Dennis Simpson and he's Randy Cantrell. Good night. Thanks for listening to another episode of hot springs village inside out a podcast where hot springs village, Arkansas is the star. Please subscribe to the podcast. You can do that by visiting our website, hsvinsideout.com and tell a friend.